Assalamu alaikum, good afternoon, and welcome to Knowledge Talks. A weekly entertainment and knowledge sharing program aired live specifically to share with you topics that contribute knowledge to the society. Every week, Knowledge Talks hosts and invites guests that are experts, professionals, and leaders from the field that bring wealth of knowledge to you. Knowledge Talks also highlights and promotes talents in the country that contribute knowledge and success to the nation. This program, ladies and gentlemen, is a weekly session that I will have with you every Tuesday at 5 p.m. I'm your host, Tariq Al Barwani, along with our studio engineer, DJ Ayub, for an hour bringing you free knowledge at your doorsteps on Oman Radio FM 90.4. Okay, stay tuned after this music break for today's interesting knowledge topic. Welcome back to Knowledge Talks, ladies and gentlemen. I'm your host, Tariq Al Barwani, along with our studio engineer, DJ Ayub, with you here live today. On Oman Radio FM 90.4. From fat, overweight to fit, healthy. From home, workouts, and diet to business, serving customers with his ideas. Hisamid Ismaili is an example of a success story to share about how he managed to lose weight and start a business that supports others to follow in the same style, ladies and gentlemen. Isam is a healthy lifestyle and nutrition enthusiast, CrossFit fitness coach, businessman, and consultant for youth project. He is a motivational speaker, professional staff at Uridu, Oman, and a father of two lovely kids, mashallah. Isam always looks for the best ways to change people's lifestyle to the best, to help them achieve goals in terms of health, sport, ambitions and their dreams. Islam is the founder of the first CrossFit box in Oman, CrossFit Tempo and the first certified CrossFit coach in Oman since 2012. Masha Allah. Islam lost more than 40 kgs in 2007 only by adjusting with the food habits. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Islam. How are you doing today? I'm doing really great, Tariq. Thank you very much. Wa alaikum as wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you very much for hosting me in your show, Tariq. Indeed, it is the pleasure is mine. You know, Assam, uh, uh, one of the things that I like, about, uh, there's a lot of things I like about you, Taban. Well, like one of the particular things that I like about you is that when I started getting involved uh, into the uh, health and lifestyle, one of the things that I have, and one of the people that I've really admired is yourself, mashallah. The reason is because you not only practice this uh, 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 habit of a healthy lifestyle, but mashallah, you go all the way out, you train people, you give advices, you give advice to me, and I always love to come to you as well. For mashallah, that's a great thing, uh, Islam. Islam, tell us about your journey so far. My journey so far, I mean, uh, I've known you, Tariq, for a long, long time. And, and you've probably known me in my youth when I was a bit uh, chubby and obese uh, back in the days. And uh, it started way, way back uh, from 2000, early 2000s when in the university, when I really didn't much care much about my weight and how is my health going to. But then I was really enthusiastic into sports. I used to play, play a lot of sports, so you call it football, basketball, uh, anything that involves sports. I used to be the first one in and the last one out. Even during the days when you were fat? Even during the days when I was fat. But then Allah, my food habit, I never related the sports into my food habit. I always thought, you know, the more I do sports, the more I lose weight. But, the, and, but then it turned out that I'm actually missing the, the basic component into the healthy and lifestyle program, which is actually which is actually looking after uh, myself and my health, basically, in terms of my food habits. And, and that wake-up call came when I was working in Dubai, and that's where I actually gained my extra 40 kgs. Wow. So, yeah, the food okay. there is quite delicious in, in Dubai. Mashallah. What was your weight at that time? When I first arrived at Dubai, I was around uh, late 80s. Okay. And uh, at the end of the... By like one year in Dubai, I went up to uh, 115 kgs. 115 kgs? Mamma mia! 
and it was quite difficult i mean as i i cannot explain it in words but then you know during the friday sermons the salat al jumaa no. uh if i couldn't find a wall to to lean on i it, i would not be able to complete the prayer or just to sit and listen to the khutbah subhanallah and that basically triggered the wake up call cause, and i had to go to the doctor just to you know please check on my back because i still didn't think that my weight was an issue but i thought there is an issue with my back Okay, okay. And the doctor put it straight forward. You want to live long, lose weight. Okay. He just he just said it that way. You want to you want to get diabetes, you want to get blood pressure, just continue the path where you are right now. Allah, was that the wake up call? That was the wake up call. That was it. There was you go, it. ladies and gentlemen. It takes a, a it takes a statement and advice or a hint or a, a a kind of situation or a challenge that to comes to you in order for you to really uh, 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 fasten up, I think. Would you agree it's because of this challenge that you had or the situation and also because of the doctor is what made you what you are today? Yes, I totally agree. I re- I totally agree. I, I never realized that, you know, my weight could be a condition and an issue until uh, the doctor actually just put it out of my face, in my face, just just hit me this doctor is in dubai he's in dubai yes. did you go and thank her or him no i couldn't find him later on <laughs> <laughs> he moved somewhere else but yeah. uh because of that i started really thinking you know uh, about how do i want to be in the next 10 years well what is what is actually my goal in terms of health within the next 10 years and and uh, how do i want to shape up and uh, then came a lot of articles and a lot of journals and a lot of books just trying to go through Uh, what is the best program to do should i take pills injections uh, should i do the you know the operations where they just you know tie up your 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 belly you know it's, there There's are a lot, a lot of, of operations things, yeah. that that involves you losing weight mm-hmm. and uh, my sister jazahla uh, khair just came to me one day and it wasn't uh, uh, her uh, advising me on taking a diet plan it was her telling me you know why don't you start up this company Okay. And I and I told her what is this company about she told me it's about lifestyle and well-being and losing weight. Yeah. So I thought uh let me try it first. Yeah. If it works for me then I'd probably take it and 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 open it here in Oman. I love that. And she said okay and I went to the agents who were in Dubai as well uh, the franchises in South Africa so I went to, to Dubai to the agents. Yeah. And I've done all the blood tests that they required and they gave me the program that I had to follow and that's when I actually dramatically lost like 40 kgs using during that program only. For how long did you lose? How or how long did it take for you to lose the 40 kgs? It took me 6 to 7 months. 6 to 7 months only. Only. And mashallah you followed the program only. Only. I followed the program only. I only adjusted my food habits. uh and the way the program was explaining how to for how to how to follow it and how to use it and what to do and what to not do and what to eat and what to not eat was amazingly easy to follow it only took commitment and dedication you want to do this you want to do this just follow the instructions okay mashallah mashallah i i respect that fully i mean 40 kgs in 6 to 7 months using the program only that's dramatic that's great and i can see it for myself mashallah you look handsome you look cool you look fit as thank well thank you thank mashallah. you very much tell me one thing what does the program entail the program basically uh, looks after i mean it it takes a lot of elements into consideration first of all it takes you know what is your date of birth uh, your gender even your shoe size into context and then it takes into uh, consideration do you are you actually do you actually have diabetes did you have do you have cancer do you have any kind of condition that is uh, that you're suffering at that moment of time at the same time it takes into consideration the blood test that you need to do that will actually give you where is your level of hormones in your body so how much cholesterol is in your body how much is the how much is your diabetes and sugar level in your body after that all of that combined it will act it will give you the optimal program that is set for you only as a person okay so the program that i give to tariq is different than the program that i give to rasan because their bodies function differently and their bodies understand food differently okay and the goal of the program is basically giving allowing your body to consume the amount of food that it needs okay and not more and not less only what it needs to survive during the day okay. and that is good that means you're not hungry and you're not full at the same time and it also specifies what type of food that is good for you in terms of 
what are, what type of cheese, what type of meat, uh, what type of uh, vegetables and fruits that are actually good for you to consume during the day. And also, it will tell you what are the supplements that you need to take into consideration while you're in the program. So it promotes a lot of organic stuff, non-chemical, no injections, no mix, uh, fun, funny mixes or funny shakes. Okay. And and with that program, if if you only just look into it and you try to play it around, and you have the option because it doesn't take you tell you to cook this fish this way. It just tells you that the fish you eat should be with this quantity. So it should be 200 grams of fish plus X Y Z grams of vegetables. You can cook it any way you want. So there is no restrictions in terms of the way you cook. There is only restrictions in what you use into cooking the element. So grill it. If you want to use olive oil, you can use one tablespoon of olive oil. If you want to use uh, mayonnaise, you can use one tablespoon of mayonnaise. It should be low fat. It should be uh, whatever the, the condition that puts you in the program. And to a lot of people, that is really difficult, especially people living in this area of the world. You know, we're used to our breads and rices and, and pastas. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we're used to all of these feasts that, that we go through and all of our friends that we go out with and no restrictions in terms of food. And, uh, you know, you look like the alien when you have your mm -hmm. own food package walking. <laughs> you know, every time you go in a restaurant and people people tell you, you know, hey, order. You, you just say, no, no, I have my own food here. Yeah, yeah, you look like exactly. the odd one out. Yeah, and and yeah. people will actually give you that look like come on man it's you can't have a break but you know and you know it very well that you know commitment doesn't have a break you you shouldn't Definitely. have a break if you have a vision you should always keep on working on it Definitely. and working on it Definitely. and that's when you see the results when you the results come in you say yes and not only you see the results the other people surrounding you the whole people uh, you're surrounding family relatives the whole world i mean they give you high respect you know when they see that and and uh, mashallah uh, that is apparent in how you are right now the program, uh, you have started it in Oman. Could you tell us about the? So you already told us about the how the program works. Tell us about the program as a business. The program, once it worked for me uh, in Dubai, basically, I've immediately prompted that this is a good thing to do. This is a good thing to promote back home in Oman. Okay. And I've in my head, I thought if I can do it, then anyone can do it. And it's called TLC for well-being and lifestyle. Uh, the head office is in South Africa with all the clinics, all the nutrition specialists, all the doctors are over there. And from our support, we're just a franchise here that basically collects all the data from the customer, puts it in the system, and they give us the optimal program. So we act like we act like advisors to the customers who comes to us. Okay. And we've kickstarted this also back in it was back in 2009 then we started this TLC program yeah. and it worked for so many people okay so many people saw results with it and uh, they've loved it so much that they keep on going back to it every now and then when they feel that they've lost balance in terms of their food and it actually keeps on working and working again and it just it, it's not only a program that you can you, you need to read and follow you can actually live it okay. that's the good thing about it you can live the whole lifestyle uh, at your home, with your kids, with your parents, anywhere you go, you can actually use the same concept in the program and you get educated by following that program in terms of what type of foods are good, what are not, how do you restrict yourself, when is the last time to eat, how many hours you should sleep. And it gives you all of this information basically for, for you not to use only during the program, but then for a lifetime. So that is something really good. Awesome information, awesome sharing, and, and, and initiating from Assam, who has lost 40 kgs himself with, the, with, with, with this practice and today is maintaining it as well. Ladies and gentlemen, let's take a quick break before we continue our interesting session today with Assam al Ismail. Welcome back to Knowledge Talks, ladies and gentlemen. I'm your host, Tariq Hilal Al Barwani, along with our studio engineer, DJ Ayub, with you here live today on Oman Radio FM 90.4. My guest today is Islam Al Ismaili, and he is a great man, a man who lives with his healthy uh, 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 lifestyle. And today is he's he's here with us in Knowledge Talk to share the knowledge with you. Islam, talking about the uh, interesting program that you have brought in in Oman, started it up, and has impacted people already. You've mentioned a very interesting point, saying that people return to the program. Uh, when they have lost balance um so does this mean that the program gives you the tools and then uh once 
But nevertheless, if you have lost balance, as you said, meaning probably gained weight, is that what you're trying to say? Yes. So they have to return again to the program. But uh, if they return again, do they need to again be measured? Uh, it depends on the person, basically, on how much basically did you gain weight after after basically losing balance. When when we take when we talk about losing balance, uh, Subhanallah, our body works in a very phenomenal way. Mm. Uh, it it can take any, it can endure anything that you give it, basically. But then. Everyone has a limit. There is always a line that once you cross, your body just goes collapse, basically. And that's when, when, when you consume a lot that your body gets confused on how much should it burn compared to how much should it you know, save as yeah. fat. Yeah. And, and the natural reaction to a body, it should keep on burning whatever you eat and save just little you know, for, for you to keep in the future. Yeah. But then once it loses balance... Then you become your body just gets confused, and instead of burning what it what it gets, it just keeps on saving it, and that's mm. when you get, you know, you get heavier and you gain more weight. Yeah. So, yes, the program works, and you have different stages of initiation, step the program and stabilization, but then that doesn't mean that after that you just go back to your old food habits and you start consuming all of those cheesecakes, pizzas, and anything uh, that is not good for you, yeah. because again your body will react. To whatever you how you treat it so mm -hmm. it's like a car engine basically mm -hmm. if you treat it well if you take it to service it the car will live long but mm -hmm. then if you don't treat it well after some time you just get problems in your engine and you have to rectify it again but then subhanallah your body is rectifiable your car your pc anything else are replaceable you need to replace those stuff so that you can get something better mm -hmm. but your body you can rectify it at any time at any moment of time Mashallah. Sometimes you may need to do the whole measurement again because the level of your the your blood test will be different, the level of your hormones in your body will be different. So you might need to do the retest again and take another program just to because the quantity of food will differ when you are fat and when you are in that stage. But then in, in many of the times my customers who just go through it again tell me that no, this is sufficient, we can live with it, it's okay, it works. Okay. So yeah, people sometimes come back to me when they need another program i myself uh, did did it twice okay the first time when i lost 40 kgs and then three years later i felt that i'm trying to lose weight in my sports i'm trying to balance my food it didn't work then i had to do it again to reset my body again to remind it that hey you know you need to burn this food you don't need to store it Okay. And and that's that's what I mean when you need to reset basically your body hormones. That's very very interesting. Does this mean if one attends this program, he or she doesn't need to do any workout, exercise, workout, and so on? The program basically specifies exactly the amount of food that you need to burn. If you enhance it with exercise, it we we don't advise to go really intense in exercise because you're already eating what you need to consume in a day. If you go more than that, if you push yourself harder then it might affect you negatively. But then that's only for the first few months, let's say, until you get used to it. Once you get used to it, then you can do any type of exercise you want. Uh, I remember even after the first three months or four months, I had you, fe you feel that you're very energized. I, I was able to run for the first time three kilometers nonstop. And that was amazing. I was like, I never ran three in, in one go. MashaAllah. Okay. And I was able to do it in one stop. And I had to go back home. I still felt, felt energized. I took a skipping rope and I skipped like for 15 minutes. And then I, I was 15. able to... 15 minutes. 15, okay. And then I was able to sleep. Okay. <laughs> and the second day I had to go play football, basketball, run and do other stuff just to, mm. you know, I feel so energetic. My body's not really comprehending this amount of energy that's coming in and it doesn't understand what to do with it. So I try to balance it out to to maximize my efforts in exercise so that I can actually go to bed. And I had a lot of customers suffering for that for, because they've been obese for a lot of, I mean, for years. And and once they started losing weight, I had people calling me at 10 p.m., 11 p.m. telling me, I can't sleep. Okay. I feel so energized. I can't mm. sleep. Mm. I'm like, okay, you need to do something to go to sleep. It's mm. not, <laughs> so you should sleep. And some people couldn't sleep for a whole day. Wow. Because of the amount of energy they feel that they're getting from, from eating healthy. Yeah. And that's what good food needs to do. Good food needs to give you energy yeah. and yeah. not make you sleep. Yeah. And that's what we tell people all the time. If you, if you eat good food, you'll have good energy, you'll work out better, you'll live better. And that's, that's what like we that. tell the people all the time. Eating good food, ladies and gentlemen, 
gives you good energy and makes you of course everything written by Allah but live longer uh, uh, and, and of course you look healthier you feel better uh, as well Hassan how are you maintaining your weight today I'm basically following the same footsteps I'm not changing the way I eat uh, I'm working out uh, basically throughout the week four times to five times a week yeah uh, I keep on working out uh, I balance my food intake I read a lot of books in terms of what type of foods and how the food uh, how should I consume the food when should I eat when should I stop eating and that basically helps me live throughout the day so my basically my 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 breakfast you know it's, it's usually between 8 to 9:30 and then my lunch is always at 1 12 to 1 and then my dinner is between you know 6 to 7 or 8 depends on how what time am I going to sleep and that's how I try to maintain my food intake throughout the day. I don't overdo in terms of my food. I'm very selective in terms of how you cook the food, what type of food is this, what type of oil did you use to cook the food. I'm sometimes really boring in terms of details when I go to a restaurant, but then if that's what it takes, then I'll, I'll do it. I'll, you know, take a break every now and then when I go out with the kids uh, every once a week or, you know, once every two weeks. I I might take a break but then the break doesn't mean I'll just go uh, crazy and bananas over over something no I just have a slice or or two in terms of the food that I'm not allowed to eat but otherwise exercise is very much a big part of now my my lifestyle I respect that very very fully habit versus a goal many people uh, uh have it as a goal you know I I I am I weigh today xyz and I'm looking forward to you know to become abc uh, in a number of months and there are the others who say no 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 I would like to maintain doing it do you have any feedback on this one yeah I have I have a lot of feedback in terms of this and and, and I get a lot of people who came to, who come to me and tell me listen I have something in one month and I want to lose this much of weight in this month mm -hmm. and uh, others say you know what is the what is the quickest diet program that I can take that will help me lose 10 kgs in one week <laughs> And uh, some take us to an extreme is like, how can I get six pack in one month? Yeah. And it, it, it's basically a lot of people uh, come with a lot of feedback and a lot of questions such of these. And the answer is always the same thing. If you put an end date to a lifestyle, then your lifestyle will end by that date. I love that. What a very powerful statement. If you put an end date to a lifestyle your life will end on that date as well. I, I totally agree. Because once you put the goal, you achieve that goal, then that's it. You, yeah, you exactly. start becoming uh, you know, lazy and in your comfort zone. A number of people I personally know that they have achieved their goal and then they went exactly. back again. Yeah. Even worse than what they used to be. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It should be a lifestyle. It should be a lifestyle. It should be something that you do on a daily basis and not something that you want an end, a start and an end date yeah. uh, kind of program. So... I, I usually, I always tell people, it's like, work out, eat healthy, live this life. This is the life that you need to live. And don't think of when, it sh when I should lose this weight. Why is my belly still big? Why am I doing this? Why am I doing that? How am I pushing myself? Don't ask these questions that brings negativity into your life. Just live it. You know, live the lifestyle and see the outcome and you will feel better. And a lot of them do. And a lot of them still are trying to work out how to get into that stage. But then many of my clients at my gym or, or at the program basically live the lifestyle. Ladies and gentlemen, live your lifestyle if health is what you would like to maintain. And of course, as I said, with the end, and what Assam has clearly said as well, is if you're, if you're healthy, then you will feel good and you will enjoy your life as well. Ladies and gentlemen, let's take a quick break before we continue our interesting discussion today with... Assam Al Ismaili. Welcome back to Knowledge Talks, ladies and gentlemen. I'm your host, Tariq Al Al Barwani, along with our studio engineer, DJ Ayub, with you here live today on Oman Radio FM 90.4. Assam, uh, uh, do you agree that your diet and work starts at home? Yes, I agree. I agree that very much. And that's why everything I do, I mean, everything I imply on myself, I imply the same thing at home. The type of foods that I eat, the type of uh, lifestyle that I eat, uh, that I live, I basically inherit that to my kids and to my family. Oh, I expect and that. And everywhere around me. So uh, if it doesn't make sense that I buy uh, coconut oil or canola oil for myself and, and give the others 
the other type of oils that are in the market. It doesn't make sense. If I want uh, every, if I want to be healthy, I want everyone around me to eat the same type of food, to live the same type of lifestyle. Mashallah. It doesn't make sense that I buy fruits for myself while buy ca- while buying candy for my kids. I will get my kids to get used to fruits as well. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't make sense that I have salad for myself during my dinner while my wife and kids have uh, some other food that are not healthy. So everyone has to follow the same lifestyle. And I'm very blessed, alhamdulillah. My family all loves that kind of food and they love uh, getting into this healthy, healthy life. And uh, my kids basically not, are not into sweets that much. They're satisfied with whatever they have. Alhamdulillah, if, very good. If you give them something, if you give them a sweet during the week, they'll just be happy for the full week. They, they don't need it every day. That's what I call uh, it. They love vegetables. Mashallah. They love uh, olives. Uh, they love uh, fruits. And we usually have a fruit session that I sit with my kids on the floor and I just, you know, peel some fruits and we all eat together. I respect that, mashallah, mashallah. So no McDee's? No Burger Mac King, McDee's, Pizza no Hut and all those Pizza things? Hut, nothing. I no, love no, that. No. I, I respect that fully. It, 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 it's challenging, but once you get it right, you not only set a great standard for yourself, but your family as well. Uh, alhamdulillah, mashallah. What are the myths uh, of exercise in gym then, in your opinion? When I'm talking about people, you know, who are saying that I will eat everything and much as I can, but I will go to the gym and exercise and become fit. W- what's your feedback about that? I'll, I'll say not everyone is the same. You have uh, you've probably seen a lot of people who are uh, who never gain fat, whatever they whatever they eat, or whatever they consume. Uh, they're basically different types of people and different types of body. You have to accept that. So I myself cannot follow a program that that uh, uh, my friend is following because his body type is different than mine. My the way my body consumes fat is different than his. So there are some people who say, you know, I'll eat as much as I want and I'll go to the gym and work out, and it works for them because their body basically consumes that type of food really fast and it actually uh, uses it to generate energy and they go to the gym and let it out. But then those are a very small percentage, could be up to 10% of people only. Okay. The rest, you eat more, you gain more. You eat more, you gain more fat. Yeah. And then to lose, to gain fat is much easier than losing fat. And I know a lot of people know this. Yeah. But then uh, there is also a thing, there is a difference be- between what you know and what you practice. And that's mm. what I tell people as well. You might know that this food is not good for you, but do you actually resist yourself from eating it do you actually practice that good lifestyle so when they go to the gym are they actually working out as much as they ate or is is it just a 1k run and then talking to this friend talking to that friend initiating talks here and there and then your three hours consumed of 20 minutes workout and the rest of two hours and a half uh, just talking with friends so a lot of commitment has to be put in place in terms of how you eat and what lifestyle you follow and how you work out as well. What would you say about belly? Belly, people who are having stomach into a belly, this is the one of uh, 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 the most spoken about area of a body in a, in, a, in a human being. And most people, when they see, they talk about it. And you see a lot of people with big bellies. Once they get married, and others, even if they're not married, but they have that part of their, their waist and their stomach. How can people get rid of that and maintain it as well? What are the steps? What are the things that they need to do? First thing, it's 90% your food. 90% basically. I can actually say that it's actually 90% of losing body fat and losing weight happens in the kitchen before even working out. So as I talk to you about different body types that consumes fat in a different way, everyone has his, his, his body basically puts the fat some air in some area. So some goes to their waist, some goes to their thighs, uh, some goes around, uh, it, it just distributes around the body equally. So you'll see different people with different body types everywhere. Okay. And uh, those who get it in the belly, it basically I, I, I think they get it worse. Because the belly is the one part of the body that is least active in terms of you, know, uh, you moving it throughout the day. And it's a, it's a part of the body that you need to actually engage in a workout so that you can actually keep it active and move and burn. Uh, But then, first of all, you need to really, really look into what food you eat. Because if you eat well, that fat that is consumed, that is surrounding your belly, will start to be consumed by your body and start to be burnt. And at the same time, if you work out hard, in terms of those areas you're trying to, to burn, basically your abs, your obliques, anything that's around your belly, 
then you'll actually start seeing the fruits of of that of the of the program that you're following and we always advise the people to to do a full body program so it's not it doesn't make sense that you focus on one area and leave the others so i don't want you to focus on your upper body and leave your lower body or i don't want you to focus on your core and leave your upper body and lower body al alone you need to do a full body program uh, and the programs that are out there are a lot nowadays i myself uh, with my gym just promote crossfit which is a full body workout and that's what we do basically we try to push people into doing these different programs uh, swimming cycling uh, jogging are also good uh, aerobic programs that help in burning fat and we also tell people you know you need to do this you need to follow this lifestyle because you want to be able to to perform anything anywhere at any time okay that's very very interesting i i i really appreciate uh, the, the information that you shared i'm sure a lot of listeners today who are listening to our program are getting these valuable tips from islam himself ladies and gentlemen let's take a quick break before we return with our interesting session today with islam and ismail welcome back to knowledge talks ladies and gentlemen i'm your host Tariq Hilal al barwani along with our studio engineer dj ayub with you here live today on oman radio fm 90.4 Islam, uh, talking about the foods, you mentioned that 90% of your diet is on the food and then the people who have belly and big stomach want to get rid of it, you said it is about the food. Could you please tell us or share with us what kind of foods to stay away from and what kind of food then you recommend for people to eat? Uh, now you're asking the question that people will hate me now. <laughs> <laughs> well, we again, we know what type of food that we need to stay away from. And uh, I have a very good formula for this. If, if, if you basically uh, work, I mean, you sleep for eight hours, you work for another eight hours and you're home for another four hours uh, and you work out for one hour, but then you eat. The, the, the amount of food that you eat is, is uh, equal to three days or four days of what you need in terms of capacity of your body so yeah. we eat a lot of rices we eat we eat a lot of bread we eat a lot of you know uh, a lot of carbs that are basically stuff that we actually don't really need that much but then we consume it in in very big big, amount, quantities. big yeah. quantities yeah. and uh, i've seen a lot of people i mean i've went to uh, one of the hospitals outside the Raman, and it was very sad to see a lot of Arabs and Omanis who are uh, basically going to the hospitals more than going to have fun. Subhanallah. And when I asked the doctor, you know, well, why is this happening? He said, your food. Look at your food. Mm. You eat this much. You eat that much. You eat a lot of rice. You eat a lot mm. of bread. And uh, you consume a lot of these food when you don't need it. Yes. So we should, we should always look into the stuff we need. So stop eating. Not stop, basically. Reduce eating. If I say stop, people will hate me. Mm. So... Reduce from your rice intake. Reduce sugar. Sugar. If you can stop sugar completely, just stop sugar. Okay. And you stopping sugar in one month, you'll see 20% difference in your body uh, really? composition. Basically, what about yes. eating dates? Dates is... So now sugar is, is changed in two, so two sections. Okay. Natural sugar and refined sugar. Okay. So natural sugar that you get from fruits, from dates, from uh, different types of, of meals that are natural... Those are okay, but then again, don't eat, don't overeat them. Don't think that when I say it's okay, that it's okay that you get a barrel of, of dates next to you and just keep on eating mm. it. Because again, uh, even orange juice, a lot of people drink orange juice and they say, hey, I'm drinking healthy. healthy, it's healthy orange juice. But then think about it. An orange juice contains seven to eight oranges. If I give you eight oranges now, would you peel and eat them all by yourself? Yeah. Not really. It's, it's not something that you're going to do. You probably eat two and two is enough for you. Yeah. But then the easiness of drinking an orange juice makes it, you know, very, you know, you think it's very healthy for you to eat and yeah. to drink orange juice. But then orange juice is seven to eight oranges. And okay, it's a fruit and it's natural and everything. But then don't overdo it. Don't overdo it, yeah. Eat enough. Two yeah. fruits, two, a lot of vegetables, meat. That's good enough for you. If you want, if you want energy source, you can eat uh, nuts. If you feel you want sugar, you can eat some dates, uh, honey. So you can mix it up as much as you want. But then you should you should always think, you know, to eat enough and not eat. Don't go over those in terms of, you know, the food that you eat and you consume in your body. Mm -hmm. But then stopping sugar, refined sugar. Mm -hmm. I can, I, I, I urge everyone to just stop eating refined sugar. 
and even salt uh, you can always have the alternatives which is you know they sell them in the market now there's the sea salt so try to move away from all of these chemical made uh, sub, uh, food items yeah. into something that is more organic something more natural something that is that you know that comes from the nature and that's yeah. how our parents and our grandparents used to live you know yeah. everything came from the farm uh, the meat came from the farm uh, the vegetables came from the farm and they managed to live a long life a long and healthy life uh, and you probably know a lot of them and I know a lot of them as well mashallah mashallah in fact i i respect what you said about uh, uh, having in uh, enough food rather than having a lot of food uh, rasul sallallahu alaihi the prophet muhammad has said we need to have moderation the way we eat in fact exactly yes uh, yeah um you have spoken about your business uh, the crossfit tell us about it well uh CrossFit basically, I s- in back in the uh, 2010 to 2011, uh, when I was into sports a lot, I used to run classes at uh, one of the local gyms here in Oman. Okay. And uh, they used to be uh, boot camp classes, basically. So mm-hmm. it was a lot of high intensity workout and, uh, you know, interval workouts and pushing people down to their limits and, you know, getting them to do push ups and sit ups and everything else. And uh, some of my friends uh, advised me at 2012, they said, like, why don't you go look at this CrossFit thing that is happening around the world? And I was really interested, but then I couldn't find it here in the market, basically none in the region or in the market. I couldn't find any information, and all the information I found was the, from the main website, which is I found out that CrossFit is an organization, and they have a lot of affiliates around the world, and they give affiliates to people who want to, but then you need to do a certificate and a test and everything else. And you need to sign up in one of their workshops. Mm. Then I took myself to one of the workshops. I passed the test. And I thought that this is the optimal program. And this is the thing that I was looking for for a long, long time. Mm. Which is having a full body workout with no restriction, basically. I do In CrossFit, we do multiple variation of workouts. So we do a lot of weightlifting. We do a lot of running. We do a lot of rowing. We do a lot of gymnastics. Uh, jumping, sit-ups, cardio. And it's always constantly varied so today you don't know what's happening in the workout tomorrow wow and none of my members know none of my my uh, current box members know that what is the workout today so it's not something that you're going to select which is the norm at the normal gym because in a normal gym when you go in you select the machines that you want to because some stuff you don't really like that much you know that it's good but then you'll just avoid them for two days and then you probably you know I try like and that. use it a I little like bit that. But then in CrossFit, you have no selection. Mm-hmm. You come there, whatever's written on the board, you have to do it. You mm-hmm. like it, you don't like it, you have to do it. Which that. gets you out of your comfort zone. Because everyone has a comfort zone. I have yeah. a comfort zone, you have a comfort zone. I even sometimes put some workout that I hate, but then I'll go and I'll do it. Just because I want to get out of that comfort zone. I don't want to be limited in terms of my potential. I don't want to be limited in terms of my skills. I want to be able to be the jack of all trades. Mashallah. And that's what we urge. That's what we push people to be. You know, you don't focus on one thing. You have to be. You have to know everything. Mashallah, mashallah. In fact, I remember I told you earlier. I just can't wait for my subscription to finish to come and join you as well. Yeah, we are waiting for you. Yeah, inshallah. Because because, because I have, uh, I respect you very much. I love your style. I love uh, the the passion that you come uh, with. And then you are an example of someone who have gone through the challenges and have succeeded. That's yeah, an example, and and I respect that as an example. And that's why I wanted to have you in, in, our, in our in our program today to speak about it, and as you share this knowledge to people, so they could learn, and you know everyone can become as Assam as well, uh, inshallah. And I will be joining you, as I said, I'm gonna. I'm just waiting for the subscription to get done. We with are my waiting for gym. you I'll with be open joining. arms, in. inshallah. Um, the, the the business that you have is it you or you are the only sole owner? I am the only sole owner here, my man. And you, you, you're the sole owner of Armani. How many uh, stations do you have? I have only one station. And right I'm now. sure you're going to have more, inshallah. And the others will, they need to start fastening the seatbelt. Inshallah. <laughs> inshallah. Uh, inshallah. How do you market your business? Well, we do a lot of social media, into, I mean, in, in terms of our marketing. So we are up to date in terms of how we market our uh, program. So we have a page on Instagram, uh, which is at CrossFit Tempo. And we have uh, the Facebook page as well, uh, CrossFit Tempo as well, the Twitter. We are in Twitter as well. And now we're working on the website uh, because a lot of my customers say, you know, you should have a website up and running. And uh, we have an app where you sign up for the class. Uh, wow. And you actually record your 
you know, you record your results, you record uh, your achievement, you record your food th throughout the day, and you can actually share that food with someone and ask him, you know, uh, instead of sharing pictures, you share your food program and ask him, what do you think? Did I do the right thing today? Did I eat the right food? And uh, that helps basically the whole, it's, it's just the whole community working in terms of a better lifestyle. So you don't feel alone in this. Yeah. You actually share the same ambition share the same dream with the whole community around around my, the CrossFit box that I have. Mashallah, so mashallah. everyone works towards the same goal, everyone has the same ambition and everyone pushes the other to to you know give his best, go 100%, push yourself and that's basically how we promote our business. This is it's fully. for the community and it's by the community as well. I respect that fully. Male and female uh, is the program uh, uh, open for male and female. Yes, it's suitable for both male and female at any age. Mashallah. at any age we don't it's it's we scale the workout based on how uh, on your performance on your level of performance so you don't need to be pushing heavy weight like everyone else you can scale your weight to to the weight that's suitable for you uh, the all the only thing that we ask is that you push yourself to your limit so that you can actually feel the difference okay one of the people have sent a message and they're asking this question is running is running will make you thin or lose weight yes it does it does running for long distances can actually help you uh, lose weight and that's why you see a lot of these marathonists in the uh, olympics good example, good example. Uh, all the marathons from east africa yes uh, are all very thin and are all very you know uh, you can consider them fit as well because they're fit he's because thin but then he can run 400 kilometers so yeah. that this guy is actually really fit so Running is type of an aerobic program. We, we have, uh, uh, in an aerobic program, your muscle cell consumes fat and oxygen to generate energy. Okay. So when you run, you're basically your fuel, your body fuel is actually fat and oxygen. Mm -hmm. So the longer you run, the longer distance you run, the more fat and oxygen is consumed. So you're more, basically, you're losing weight faster. Okay. So running is one type of exercise that actually that's an aerobic exercise that promotes uh, weight loss okay, a lot, okay. including swimming as well and cycling. Those are all, uh, you never see a cyclist who's really fat. You'll never see a marathonist who's fat. You, get very you never see a fat. swimmer who's really fat. Uh, you'll never see all of it. But then you'll see a weightlifter who is overweight, but then the weightlifter is also fit. True. You cannot True. say that he's not fit, he can lift mm. 400 kgs, 200, 300 mm. kgs. I love it. And that is, that is also... You know, he's he's a he's a little different scale of fit. Yeah. So people have different scales of fitness in them, and yeah. and the bodybuilders also fit. Yeah. But then, if you follow the lifestyle of a bodybuilder, eating six chickens and and uh, all of that, you you might be it's it's it might affect <laughs> you differently. But yeah. then they are also considered fit. So, fitness is a term that is applied to everyone. Yeah, depends on how you use it. Depends uh, on how you use it, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what about people who are saying that by running it makes you uh, uh, it makes you lose weight, meaning thin? Then that is uh, also they say that you lose muscles as well. Exactly. So now, now you come to the other part. I run a lot. I'm losing muscles, or uh, I can run for long distances, and uh, but then I don't feel strong. That is that is very normal because. If you if you are a runner, a pure runner, and an athlete in running, you would expect that you already know you already know that you're sacrificing strength for endurance mm -hmm. and stamina. But then, if if at the same time, if you're a weightlifter, you're sacrificing you're you're getting strength but sacrificing your endurance and stamina. So, if you put a three people in one in one lane, uh, for example, you get a weightlifter and you get a marathonist and you get someone who does let's say crossfit for example yeah. and you tell the three you know pick three exercises each one pick one exercise and we'll do it and we'll see who's who's the winner at the end of this yeah. exercise yeah. of course the marathonist will say let's run 42 kilometers yeah, like the marathonist will win definitely yeah. the weightlifter will stop somewhere in two kilometers because he can't do it <laughs> the crossfit guy will be able to complete it but then not at the same time as the marathonist, the marathonist yeah. and then the weightlifter will say okay let's do some weightlifting yeah the the marathonist will not be able to carry 60 mm. kgs probably his less than 50 percent of his body but then he won't be able to carry it yeah. the weightlifter will go up to 300 400 kgs and but then the way the crossfitter will be able to do will be able to do 50 percent of that and he will come at second yeah 
And then the CrossFit guy will say, okay, let's do both. Let's run and do weightlifting at the same time. And that's one type of workout that we do sometimes. Yeah. You run 200 meters and then you do some weightlifting. And then you run 200 meters and then you do some weightlifting. Of course, the marathonist will not be able to catch up because he can't do weight. He might yeah. be able to run yeah. but not yeah. carry weight. Yeah. The, mar- the weightlifter will not be able to run but then he'll be able to carry weight. But, and you as a CrossFit guy will be able to do both. So if you look at the average at the end, you're basically the fittest between all of these people. Mashallah. And that's what the that's what we're trying to promote. We're Mashallah. not trying to push you towards one sport. We just want you to have a lifestyle of fitness. So this is what we want you to be. I mean, we want you to be able to do anything at any time. Not to be a superstar in it, yeah. but then just to be able to do it. MashaAllah. Assam, thank you very much for joining us today on Oman Radio FM 90.4 to share about your fitness journey and success attend till date. MashaAllah. I would like to take this opportunity to wish you the very best and success in all you do, my friend. Thank you very much, Tarek. Thank you, John, for having me here at uh, your talk show. It's, I've been, I'm, I'm actually following your talk show every Tuesday at 5 p.m. It's, it's the one that keeps me driving from work to, to, the, to the gym every day. And uh, it's very exciting. And I like your host and your guests. And your style as well. And I like the way you're shaping up right now. It's, it's really I'll, I'll, good, mashallah. It'll be very, very wrong for me to take credit without saying thanks to you because you have given tips to many of my family members. I've just copied and started <laughs> doing the great job. So thank you very much, Asal. You're welcome. Thank okay, you. ladies and gentlemen, we've come to the end of our program for this week. I hope you all had an intriguing time with us. Let us catch up again next week on Tuesday, same time from 5 p.m. for a knowledge session. I'm Tariq Khalal Al-Barwani along with Asuri Engineer. DJ U wishing you all a happy and a pleasant week. Ma'a salama.